Hello everybody, this is Eddie with Mobile Homestead Solar Services and Mobile Homesteading. And this is the new Mobile Homestead. We've been building on it for about a year and a half now. And as I promised you guys, I'd give you some updates as soon as I got it to where I could show it to you. Today I'm going to show you our solar power system and our electrical system in our Mobile Homestead. So here we go. This is our solar array up on top of the new Mobile Homestead. This is the original array we had on our other fifth wheel. We built it over a period of time. It's kind of mixed match panels. They're all 12 volt panels and they go from 150 watt up to a 200 watt panel. Um, the only panel that we added to these is that one back in the corner there. It's the only new panel we put on um, that wasn't on the original uh, fifth wheel system that we had. Uh, it's right around 1600 watts and uh, we have enough room right there in the back beside our vent back there we have enough room for a panel there one in the center on the back and then one right there on that side and also we have enough room for a panel right here we tilt our panels not everybody does what we do i make my own tilting brackets if you look right here in this corner, that's one of our tilts. It's ambidextrous. This one on here on this side is exactly the same. Tilts up and then we put a bar from here down to here. Um, all of our, our wiring is in our roof. It's not on top of it like the ones I have to install with uh, regular RVs because uh, we had the luxury when we built the roof I could put it put the wiring inside of it so it goes from this J box up and this one has a junction box on the back of it some of them uh, they had MC4 connectors and I just uh, like these right here had MC4 connectors and I just um, but connected it together made it a solid wire again but that is our solar array up here on our roof. All right, guys, here is our battery bank, or I should say battery banks. We actually have two um, 450 amp hour battery banks, which consist of these T105RE batteries, four in each one, gives us a total um, energy storage of 900 amp hours. Now ours are lead acid batteries. A lot of people have gone to lithium. Um, I've got a couple of reasons why I haven't gone. One, this is my original battery bank. It's a five year old battery bank and it's doing awesome. I've got no complaints. Um, keep the water levels up on my batteries and they do really well. And the other thing is, if you notice, this is an actual outside storage area. You can see the cracks in the door over there. Um, we keep our propane tanks. If you look right there, you can see one of, of our regulators. We run four 30-pound um, propane tanks in here, and it, it needs to be open. So this is a cold area when it's cold outside, and it's a hot area when it's hot outside. So these batteries need to be able to handle uh, being in cold weather and hot weather. Uh, we've been in some pretty hardy locations where you need to have that. Lithiums would not do real well here, and I don't want to waste my inside space just to be able to put um, a different kind of battery in. Plus, these batteries are doing great, so there's no reason to replace them. And the other thing is, you know, the cost of lithiums is just outside of my my uh, ability to pay for right now. So I'm I'm sticking with my lead acid batteries doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with lithium it just means this makes sense for my application um, I also haul with a semi so I can handle the extra weight so it doesn't really kill me some of you guys you guys have to use lithiums for the weight factor because you're already overweight all right let's move on to the next area here is our electrical room uh, we have two inverters a pure sine wave magnum 2000 watt inverter right there and over here we have a modified sine wave 2000 watt inverter. It was given to us by a client that didn't want it anymore and we put it in with the idea that we would replace it later on with a 2000 watt inverter. It's come in pretty handy though. I normally use it for uh, charging our batteries. It takes the load off the pure sine wave inverter 
and also I've, I use it to uh, run tools and things on the outside so we can cut down the load on the 2000 watt Magnum pure sine wave inverter. We have two individual um, Morningstar TriStar 60 amp solar charge controllers. They're PWM, they're not MPPTs. All this equipment was originally in our other camper and we moved it into this one. Now each one runs off half the array. That uh, the left hand inverter handles the left hand array on our top of our roof and the right hand handles the right hand array. Each one of these are individually hooked to each side battery bank. This, this charger goes to the um, right hand side battery bank and that one to the left hand side battery bank. Both of the inverters can work off of either one or the other of the battery banks or they can work on both at the same time. Right now everything's hooked up so it's one big 900 amp hour battery bank. The whole reason I decided to do it this way was I wanted to be able to if I needed to remove a battery bank to do maintenance or if something was wrong with the battery or if something was wrong with the charge controller or something of that nature I would never be a hundred percent out of power. I'd be able to move switches around to be able to run um, either one of the, the inverters off of either one of the battery banks. Um, we do run the PWM Morningstar TriStar controllers. A lot of people like the MPPTs. I like them too but uh, I had these and there's no reason to replace something if it's working so uh, we kept these. If they die in the future I possibly will go to an MPPT controller but I guarantee it's going to be a Morningstar TriStar MPPT controller. One of the things I wanted to mention is I am big on fusing and breakers. A lot of systems don't have enough fusing breakers and a way of turning the power off. Um, I've got a lot of battery switches. I've got a lot of, of breakers and 12-volt uh, breakers in the system. We have a lot of fuses and that's uh, really important on a system this size. See I got a, three of them over here um, and a fuse down here. Without these these in place this could be a very dangerous system. Um, catch your RV on fire and then you wouldn't have a home again so I'm big on fuses guys so if you have even a small system make sure that you have it protected because without circuit protection you're just opening yourself up for burning your camper down. Here's our solar charge control monitors, our battery monitors and our controls for both of our inverters. If you look as I said before, we have two individual systems. We have a left-hand system and a right-hand system. Each one go individually down to each one of the individual battery banks. Now right now they're connected together as one big 900 amp hour battery bank, but if anything was to happen we can remove one or the other so that we don't lose our system and we will still be able to, to work um, you know, with, with one of the systems just as we have two solar charge controllers I've got a battery monitor for each one of the battery banks so I can tell the health of each one of the battery banks what's going in and what's coming out so I can tell if I'm pulling too much of a load off of one or if something's wrong with one of these battery banks we have both of our inverters the pure sine wave 2000 watt magnum and the modified sine wave 2000 watt magnum the good thing about this is, is we have we have two individual shunts, so I can actually tell if I'm pulling too much off of one side or the other, or if I've got a bad cell in one of my batteries, it will tell me that one of my battery banks is not um, is not working properly. It's taking too many amps out of that battery bank, or or one's not working completely. Then uh, I'll be able to notice it, you know, by looking at either one of these monitors. This is our inverter sub panels. This one right here is for our pure sine wave inverter. Most of the loads go to the pure sine wave inverter that go into the house. There's one outlet that goes outside and uh, so I can have pure, pure sine wave inverter to uh, charge up my uh, lithium batteries on uh, my drills and stuff of that nature. And this one over here is a modified sine wave inverter sub panel. I don't have as many outlets hooked to it, only a couple of wires going into it. But um, I have an outlet outside. I'm going to have a second one out there also here pretty soon so that I can take and run my saws and equipment of that nature. 
This is our 12 volt load center fuse box. And it's made by Blue Sea. Um, I like stuff that's made in boat over the stuff that's made in RVs. As you can see, you can take this loose. Sorry about loose wires, I haven't finished yet, guys. But it uh, has all of its grounds here at the top. Um, you have all your individual loads on your positive side, and the, the fuses are real simple. Uh, it's a good, strong system. It's not made like an RV where it's, it's a little flimsy. So uh, I have one of these in, in my front and in back, so I've got a divided 12 volt system. This is our second Blue C 12 volt power center in the rear of our camper. It handles all the loads from the middle all the way to the back. That way we don't have, um, you know, small number 10 wiring and stuff of that nature running all the way from the front to the rear of the coach um, handling uh, all of our individual loads. So we separated our system into two of these, one in the front and one here in the rear. Uh, you see this these in a, a lot of boats and marine use and uh, I really like these over the RV stuff. RV stuff's a little um, lightweight and uh, I don't I don't like it for a full-time use like I'm this using. This is our it. main like breaker panel. Uh, our power comes in from our shore power and goes through our um, progressive dynamics um, EMS electrical management system and then comes here. Uh, at this point all of our loads get separated out to both of our inverters um, and we have uh, two individual outlets, a rear and a front one, so that if we decide when we're on shore power or when we're using our generator, we can run an electrical, um, uh, like a uh, electric heater of some sort. Um, also our refrigerator, um, high voltage for our refrigerator, so you can run it on regular electric. Um, our hot water heater element and also uh, our dryer so that it doesn't run directly through the inverters. Um, that way we we can run all of our systems off of either a generator or our shore power. I can also take and shut our inverters down and run everything off of a of a low powered like say um, a 15 amp uh, power coming into the shore and run uh, certain loads off of that and still run our inverters so I can separate the system. Uh, it's kind of like you'd have in an off-grid cabin. That's the whole way we set this up. We wanted to make sure it was more like an off-grid cabin and not like an RV because this is our full-time home. So we wanted to make sure that this is going to last. So that's the reason we did it this way. All right, guys, there you go. That is an overview of the Mobile Homestead's solar power system. Now on to the next project. I'm in my truck and I'm getting ready to swap out the uh, the old modified sine wave inverter that's in here for uh, one that a friend gave us. It's a Zantrax Pro Watt 1000 pure sine wave, and uh, just want to say you know God bless and happy trails.